how in the hell am I going to get this on there? Huh. So we're going to install the new Celestron Focuser, which is uh, for their SCTs and the Rasa included. Um, just found out about this thing, so hopefully this will work well. You want to see an unboxing? There's the box. And it's out of the box. So in the box you're going to find the Celestron Focuser itself. A cable to go from the focuser back to your Celestron hand controller if you're using a Celestron mount. Get a couple little tools here, a screwdriver and a wrench. You get the adapter plates in order to mount it to your scope. And a little locking collar in order to go from the uh, existing knob on the SCT or your astrograph back to the focuser itself. Now on the focuser you're going to have uh, on the bottom here you've got a 12 volt 1 amp power input if you choose to go that route or you can power it off your USB supposedly which is a, a 2.0 USB back to your uh, laptop or potentially your mini computer though I do believe it says 900 milliamps is required in order to operate the focuser and then this is the auxiliary jack which is going to connect your, to your hand controller if you're using a Celestron hand controller. <clears throat> to start off with these are the directions that you get and it is tiny print. I mean, I wear glasses and I still couldn't see this very well. So you know what? Get rid of that and print yourself out the big direction sheet off the Celestron website. So step one is we need to take the rubber uh, grip here off of the stock focuser. Now, Celestron says that if you should be able just to pull it off, but if you can't, to use a flat bladed screwdriver here and gently pry up on it in order to get it off. There we go. Next up is they tell you to remove these three screws off of the stock, the stock uh, flange here. I guess you would call it a flange. So we're going to carefully remove these. Now you're going to remove, uh, reuse these screws. So I would suggest that you do not lose them. Sometimes I like to keep the little bag there just in case I uh, misplace or drop them. And then next, we're going to carefully remove this plate. There we go. Now, depending on which type of scope you have, uh, you got two different flanges here that you can use uh, for this in order to determine what you need. So in this particular case, I'm going to be using this flange uh, since this is the eight uh, up to nine and a quarter. So we're going to put that one on line it up like so and we're gonna put our screws back on so we gotta grab our screws again while I appreciate the fact that Celestron gave you uh, the tools certainly it would be better if it was magnetic <clears throat> so we're just gonna pop it in there like so line up the first screw there we go get it started <clears throat> And then go ahead and place my second screw in there. Again, this would be a lot easier if you had a magnetic screwdriver. And I would tighten these down, but I wouldn't try to torque them down. I mean, it's not, as long as it's seated to the backing, if you just look here on the sides, on each side, just make sure that it's, it's on the back. So, all right, there we go. Now, one of the things that they're, uh, they're telling you to do here is you want to look on the front of your focuser and it's going to tell you to make sure that this arrow is somewhere in between these two marks. If the arrow is not in between those two marks, you got this little wrench right here and you put it on there in order to move it to where it's somewhere close. Now the reason behind this is because on the back side you have the clamping screw right here and you need to have access to that when the focuser is on. So this at this point is lined up, we're good to go. Now in that uh, toolkit, you get a little little hex head and they tell you to go ahead and loosen out that little screw right there, which we're gonna do. So it doesn't take it out completely, just loosen it up. So 
We got a little bit loose. That should be fine. There's a supply collar that's going to fit inside the focuser. And if you notice, there's a little recess right here uh, on, on the focuser itself. In the sleeve, you got the little hole right there for the screw. So you're going to just line that up, pop it in there, and it should slide down into that thing. Now, be careful when you open up the package uh, where this is located in. There's going to be a little tiny screw like this as well as a hex head. So make sure that you don't lose those. So we're just going to secure that into there. Now, as I said, you're also going to get a little uh, hex, hex screw here that's going to fit right here into this spot. Now you want to put it on there, but you do not want to sink it or tighten it all the way down. You're literally just going to uh, thread it in just a few turns and then hold it at that point. There we go. That should be enough. Now next thing we're going to do, if you notice, you have two uh, hex head screws right here into the front. And what's going to happen is these are going to mount onto the plate here uh, depending on the orientation of where you want to have it. So for me, this is actually the bottom of the scope. I know everything looks tilted, but it's because I'm actually mounted up on the mount right now, which just makes it easier for me to work on. So this is where we're going to attach it, where it's kind of in line here with the bottom. Now these screws are going to line up somewhere on here, depending on my orientation. So I'm going to slide the focuser onto the tube. And then I'm going to locate where these are going to be. So it's kind of weird. I don't know if I want it like that or that. It's just going to depend, I guess, where they line up. So there's two alignment screws there. I don't particularly like that. So maybe here would be a little bit better. I'm not sure. It appears to be going in, I think. There we go. Now it says to alternate tightening back and forth on each side, snug one side down, snug the other side down. There we go. A little bit more snug. A little bit more snug. You don't need to hammer down on these. You just need to snug them up tight. There we go. Okay, so finally, uh, if you remember that little hex screw that we had up here in the back, you need to tighten that down now securely and that will clamp it down to the uh, to the stock that comes out. If for whatever reason you can't get to this uh, set screw, you can take that wrench again and just rotate this around in order to bring your set screw up. But I don't see a reason why I'd have to do that because uh, it looks like I got it pretty good in line for me to be able to use. And I'm just going to put there we go. All right. So at that point, it's installed. There we go. Isn't that cute? I like it. So the next step is go ahead and go to the Celestron site, www.celestron.com. And up in the search menu, you can just type in focuser and go down here to the motor focuser for SCT and Edge HD, click on that. And then scroll yourself down to support and downloads. And then you'll see here, here's the instruction manual for operation. That was that uh, setup guide that I showed you to make up for the tiny, tiny print that they uh, sent to you. Your Celestron focuser utility program that is going to be, let's let that run, uh, that's going to be basically your, your desktop controller if you're not going to be using a different program in order to control your um, focuser. So that's what that looks like right there. Next you can do is download your focuser ASCOM driver. That fire up and this is what you're going to go for right here is USB ASCOM driver and device driver. Those are the two that I am uploaded for mine. And we'll let that run. Okay, so once you have your ASCOM installed, 
Uh, you can either use the, the desktop utility that you downloaded earlier, or if you want to, if you're using some sort of other program for uh, doing your focusing routine. Um, if you want to do it the easy way, go into your focusing, uh, the program you're going to be used for your focusing, which in this case for me is SGP. And I'm going to go up to my equipment profile manager, which this is out of date. I actually need to update this for, uh, for this Rasa. But once you get it set up, if you go into your focuser control, pull down, you should see the Celestron USB focuser. If you click on settings, it's going to pop up this little box here and identify which COM port is in. And if you click on calibrate, here's your uh, utility program that would typically come up for you um, if you were just using the desktop utility. But this is actually embedded uh, by SCOM into uh, this program. So click on connect and what you can do is just click on begin the calibration and it's going to start rolling and twisting and turning and it's going to basically sound like a cat going through a blender so if you're used to the moonlight um, being quiet uh, yeah this is definitely not a quiet motor uh, but hopefully it'll do the job so we'll find out it'll come here uh, usually it says it takes about two to five minutes I've ran this a couple of times now um, and it, it's about accurate. It's about two to three minutes. And what it's doing is it's pushing the focus all the way in and then taking it all the way back out again. And it's, of course, measuring its position. Okay, there we go. It's done. Now, uh, as far as your, like your settings um, in uh, your, your program, as far as like step size and stuff, uh, you know what? I'm not 100% sure yet. I, I would assume that it's going to be using the same basis of what it did with the Moonlight um, that I had it set for there. So that's the assumption I'm going to go on is that we're going to stick with the same settings. But we'll test that uh, as soon as we have a clear night. Booyah! We're done. Now we have an automatic focuser on the 8-inch Rasa. We're good to go. Clear skies.